Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. We have a seasonal channeling guest and that would be Rod Serling. So Rod Serling is the guy, the narr narrator for um, the series, The Twilight Zone, the old school series, the black and white series. You know, the guy that always kind of smoked a cigarette. He told you about these creepy, weird, strange Twilight Zone stories. So let's have a conversation with him about the Twilight Zone and maybe about the afterlife. Some interesting, maybe we should ask him about dimensions. Let's, let's, let's just see kind of what comes up when we chat with him. All right, so let's see if he can come in here. Ah, thank you. I can smell the smoke, the cigarette. It really smells very thick tobacco-like, like really thick, like almost not pipe-like, but almost kind of borderline cigar. I'm just gonna share that. Ah, I actually, it was just all of a sudden, I'm like married, married and divorced. A few times, three times maybe, I'm not sure exactly. Married and divorced, married and divorced. He's talking to me about, um, Things aren't always black and white. There's a lot of little pieces here. Just a second, let me just see. Let me make sure I'm grounded. It's really important that when you do channeling that you're grounded and centered so that you get accurate information and I can plug in and get a nice flow in dialogue. So let's see. Just gonna connect into my body. Yeah, I'm a little tired. I am a little tired. I might be. I'm just gonna ask Archangel Michael to come in. Archangel Raphael to come in as well, and Archangel Gabriel. So I have three archangels that are gonna assist me. Michael, for like just his, his uh, support, energetic support and protection. Raphael for healing and for um, recognition for the human body. So he's helping to support my physical body so I can do a channeling right now. And then Gabriel for communication and connection. So Michael is blue in his energetic aura. You might see that. Raphael is usually green for me in the energetic aura. And then gold in solar plexus yellow is Gabriel. All right. So now that we have three, we can talk. Yes, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. So old Hollywood types, I do enjoy a conversation about old Hollywood. So am I correct in assuming that you also were a writer and wrote some of these stories for The Twilight Zone? That's where we're going to start, if that's okay with you. He literally shows me, yes, yeah, script, script after script after script after script, and he might also be a producer. It feels like he did multiple things on The Twilight Zone. Yes, he says multiple roles. Okay, so do you have... Um, any kind of ins oh literally he's showing me right away before i even okay so he's sh sharing with me he's acknowledging william shatner who recently went up into space talk about different dimensions or unique alternate experiences right and he's showing me a there's there's he was in several episodes actually he was in more than one episode but he's showing me an episode where um, William Shatner as a guest was actually in an airplane and kind of went crazy or paranoid or something they thought um, seeing somebody some kind of creature like yeti like looking creature um, outside of the airline. Um, wing and such and it turns out that that was actually a real like when they land and stuff that was like a real thing and but everybody thought he was crazy kind of a thing so that's the one he's showing me as his favorite and favorite guest star William Shatner and then this was one of the this was the episode that he particularly liked with William Shatner so yes let's talk about dimensions let's talk about space he says. Okay, so what can you tell us about space? This is interesting. I didn't actually expect this, but this is how it flows when we are connected and we have a spontaneous conversation. And that's what's happening now. All right, so talk to us about space. Yes. Time and space. He says are very curious things. I've always been interested, he says, in science. Very fascinated. And I think that there's a lot of mystery and a lot of room, a lot of wiggle room for different interpretations and uses for time. And he says, I think space gives us the most ample opportunity for unknown territory, unknown, um, unknown um, possibility or discovery. 
And he says, the more we can understand what life is like beyond the planet of Earth, the better human, humans will be served living a life on Earth. He says, you know, the human psyche is, is fascinating and tragic. He says, it provides this incredible desire for this search for kind of a drive, he says, a drive to really understand what it's like to fully live. And yet you can't accurately reflect upon a life lived until you're at the end of it or after it. So it is difficult to understand at the time that you're working on the project or experiencing the storyline how good it really is. He says, no, I think that there is a sense of that with intuition. There is definitely that uh, kind of self-navigating uh, uh, pathway. He says self-navigating path. But I think that the mind trips us up, he says. I think imagination is bigger and more profound than we recognize or realize. I think the, the human capacity uh, to process and understand things that are very complicated is greater than we give ourselves credit for. And the vastness of understanding only gives us more questions than answers, which promotes this opportunity for exploration, which is why we, as humans, you find yourself in a place to want to run away from or get out quickly from what you perceive as confinement, whether that be a job you don't like or a relationship you're not happy with or um, like a child wanting to grow up, always wanting to be older, always wanting to be over, always wanting to be older. And this always wanting to be older energy, he says, this, this, this mentality, which it is mental, wanting to be older, is that there's this understanding that the progression of aging gives you a sense of seasoned experience that is looked up to by others and your kind. So the other humans look up to you as this advisor and wise advisor. Yet there is a point at which when you pass that mark where you are valuable to those who are younger than you are, you cease to have a, you cease to have a, a position in the economy of and he's kind of showing me like there's an economics to do with knowledge and wisdom and passing that along. And because humans live longer than they have ever before, there is a point at which the physical body deteriorates now faster than even the mental body. And it's causing a disruption in what was once understood as elders and then taking care of the elders, which was a, a peaceful existence, like a retirement. And he says that doesn't exist anymore because there has been this like this um, desire to live beyond, live longer. And but the, then the truth is, at the same time, there's also this need to to run, to escape. This escapism that is uh, quite quite a disease, actually, unless an individual can understand how to harness it and form it into creative endeavors, like the Twilight Zone stories. Wow, okay, I had no idea how, that he was a talker, like a real talker talker. He's the talker talker. So we should get along well, right? Well, I mean, that's really like a big deal. So can you talk to us about, since you're talking about space, what about aliens? Can you talk to us about that? Are there ETs and like aliens and stuff? Like obviously I have some perspective on that, but what, what, what do you, what say you from the afterlife perspective? He says, to believe there is only one source of life, which would be Earth, would be quite ridiculous, actually. He says, however, the depth of storyline that has come from the common awareness that there are light, there is life on other planets, and that there are other cultures, civilizations, species, etc. There seems to be a deeply rooted fear of being taken over by others, probably because of our human history with wars and countries and how these things are formed and how power is something that is very cherished and held tightly to. Pro it is probably because of that. 
However, I think most humans do entertain the thought of life on other planets, especially now that there is a need to consider resources outside of what the earth can provide. So do we need to do that really? Are you talking like about global warming and stuff? Like this is the deep channeling. I didn't expect this from Rod Serling, but hey, whatever, right? We're here. So are you talking about like global warming and like having like there's more stuff happening on earth environmentally and like long-term sustainability with food and environment and things? Mm, he says, in part, in part that contributes, he says, but it, it's a natural progression for the mind to wander beyond what it knows and to want to explore and reach out into new area areas and new territories and to bring more advancement more innovation more technology not in a competition or competitive way but in a creative way says so human beings are very very resourceful and creative and when you can approach the very real human problems or issues that are just challenges with a creative mind and be willing to look beyond what is just here now and to create what is next, which would then lead to the collaboration of multiple things that are being built right now or discovered right now, to be able to come together to create the then resolution, solution, or opportunity for resolution or solution, do you see? He says, so everything, it's not just a jumping to the end or finding the answer, it is the, the things that have to be built and to come together in order to then achieve a new understanding of innovation, technology, development, so that that can be used to he says, not just manage what you have, but to understand that there is abundance, that the nature of the universe really truly is abundant, but that doesn't mean this one plant can reproduce and become abundant no matter how it is treated. It's not about that. People, when they're treated certain ways, respond and react in different things. It's the nature versus nurture, whole philosophical and psychological conversation, <clears throat> to which there's really no what comes first, the chicken or the egg, etc. See, there are lots of different takes on that, he says. But that's not what I mean by the innovation and the technology. There are things that are being developed and built now in the minds of many that when they come together, they can formulate a new, more supportive platform for life to exist. So it's not a replacement of, it is a expansion of. And he says, really, one of the things you really need to believe is that humans are creative and resourceful and innovative. And it's not about taking from one person to give to another. It's much more about this abundant understanding of what we're creating now is gonna support the creation of what is next and the what is next that's created because of what's being created right now is what will lead you to what it is that you need he says so you have to really have the faith in the process is how it feels faith in the process and, and it's a lot about um discovery and allowing innovation and recognizing that there will be failures and there will be misunderstandings but that any technology that is developed <clears throat> as it is perceived as good or bad or moral or amoral it is something that you learned from and then can utilize parts or pieces thereof to create the next. And he says there are lots of advancements that come from many broken pieces of other things. That is, this is fascinating. I really did not expect Rod Serling to be so like philosophical deep, maybe. I just, wow, wow. So let me ask you this. Let's ask a fun question. <clears throat> Who is your favorite person in the afterlife that you have connected to or met? Or maybe when you were a human, someone that you would have liked to have met um, and just have conversation with, like that had preceded you in death. Okay, let's say that. Um, he's showing me the comedian George Burns. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. Um, I think he lived longer than you did. Um, George Burns, he's showing me. Um, funny really comedic comedic actors is what he's showing me um then he said it was it was um and then he gives me a vibe of robin williams i'm not sure what why that is i don't know if they ever actually met but he shows me um 
George Burns and Robin Williams. That's quite a combination. He says different times, different faces of generations, he says. And he says, um, comic relief is something that will serve you well. He says, that is something I would recommend highly to anyone to laugh, to really enjoy a big belly laugh. He says, when your gut is just busted open, he says, that is the best thing. Comedic actors and comedians are so talented. He says, that is one thing that I would um, highly recommend as part of the human experience is the laughter. From, from incredibly talented comedian, comedians. All right, wow, that's interesting. I didn't expect that necessarily. Huh, lots of unexpected things with Rod Serling in the afterlife. Okay, so I'm just gonna feel in here. Okay, so I love Disney, and Disney has, at Disney World in Orlando, Florida, at Hollywood Studios, they have a ride called Hollywood Hotel Tower of Terror. And it literally is themed on the on Twilight Zone. <clears throat> How do you feel or what do you think about that? See, I just get so happy about Disney. He says that is joyful. And see, so he said, see, look, happy. Yes, that is joyful. He says, um, it introduces the whole concept of, of the quirky or unusual stories, the, the interesting storylines that don't always have a resolution. It introduces the concept of not needing to always know the answer or not needing to have everything spelled out for you, to being able to leave some things to the imagination to allow you to complete the story for yourself. He says, I think it encourages writing. I think it encourages storytelling. I think it encourages a whole new generation to embrace the mysterious, that which is mysterious. And he says, that is what imagination is all about. That's what creatives and writers live for, is that imagination. Huh, so you approve. Hmm. Hmm. He says, hmm. if people enjoy it. <laughs> so, all right. I'll think about you the next time I write on that. Actually, I've been to Disney World a couple of times this year. I'm trying to think, two times? Let's see. April and end of April and in beginning of August. <clears throat> okay, so twice. And I have not, neither time did I ride on the Hollywood Tower of Terror, the Tower of Terror, I didn't. Um, because the, my, I was with my sister and she doesn't like the drops because it goes up and then it drops and it goes up and it drops. And I was fine with that, I like it. It scares the heck out of me because I'm not a big heights person. But when you go up, the doors open and you look out and you can see and then everybody's like, ah, screaming and then it drops down and you wear a seatbelt and it's a whole thing. And um, <clears throat> it's scary. It's very scary for sure, so. I'm getting a notice on my camera that I am low on battery, so I need to make sure I wrap this up. Okay. All right, so here we go. So you have just listened to a channeling session with Rod Serling from The Twilight Zone. If you don't know who he is, Google it up, check it out, and get a little bit of backstory. Because you know on Above Life Channel, I don't give you just all the data or stats about afterlife celebrity guests. We talk about interesting things, things that are fun and curious. And I thought this would be a good season to do this since we are close to Halloween 2021 when I'm sharing this particular video. So I hope you enjoy that and appreciate the seasonal nod today. All right, so this is Bridget. I hope I've inspired your spirit today, fills you with some hope and encourage you to live your life. It's your life after all with some great insight from Rod Serling from The Afterlife. Thanks for being here.